Now, what if the child asks for a scorpion? A good father is going to say, no, you can't have it. So God cannot, will not say yes to everything you ask. He cannot, or he would be a bad father. Dugim, say it, means fish. It's the Hebrew word fish, fish. Akravim means scorpions. It is the dugim and the akravim, the fish and the scorpions. Everybody deals with good and bad in their life. Good, in, good times, bad times. Everybody, nobody on earth does not deal with that. Good circumstances, bad circumstances, good and bad events. Of course, those terms are, can mean more than one thing. In other words, we use good times. You're having a good day? What does it mean? We're saying, well, yeah, things are going the way I want them to go. That's a good day. Things are going pleasant. That's a good day. I didn't have a lot of problems today. That's a good day. I got things that I wanted. That's a good day. So that's how we say a good day. Good times, that's one re way of saying it. Pleasant day, enjoyable day, things went my way. And bad would mean the opposite. You know, things were unpleasant today. I had conflicts and problems and things didn't go my way. Well, but both terms can mean something else. Is that truly what a good day is? Good ultimately is good in God's eyes. Spiritually good. What's morally good? What's ethically good? What's ultimately good? That's the, that may be, you may have a, what you think is a good day may not be a good day spiritually. You may think you're having a bad day may not be a bad day. And that kind of goes along with what we're going to get into. We don't have a problem with good days. We do have a problem with bad days. We've got a problem with bad things. Bad things happen and we say, God, why? Why do you let this happen in my life? Why God? Or Lord, I asked for a fish, you gave me a snake. I asked for this, my husband, I asked that you gave, my husband turned out to be a snake. <laughs> Lord, I asked for an egg, you gave me a scorpion, I got stung in this situation. Messiah is saying, as a father gives to his child, so God gives to you. And so now it is taught by, by uh, you know, a whole bunch of school of thought that whatever you ask, you're going to get it, and that's just not the Bible. It, if it's in God's will, yes. Or the more you're dwelling, it says if you love everybody, love like I love you, and, you know, and if you're in God's spirit, you're going to ask according to his will, and then you will get. But look carefully. If your child asks for an egg, if your child asks for a fish, an egg is good for the child. A fish is healthy for the child. So if your child asks for a good thing, you're going, to give a, you're going to give the child, if you're a good parent, you're going to give the good thing. It did say if a child asks for a bad thing, that you're going to give it or God's going to give it. It doesn't say if you know how to give things. It says you know how to give good things. Now what if the child asks for a scorpion? A good father is going to say, no, you can't have it. So God cannot, will not say yes to everything you ask. He cannot or he would be a bad father. When I was, I have this memory, sometimes you have these memories and it, they don't quite fully make sense, but I, I have a memory, I remember I was in summer camp and they had an alligator, uh, like a baby alligator, like this big. And I went up to them, they were doing a, like a presentation for the kids, I was like six years old, and I, I, said, I said, could I buy that alligator? And they said, how much would it be? And I don't even know why they even said this. They said, $10. So I went home to my mother. I said, mom, I want, there's an alligator, baby, it's a baby, alligator, $10. And this is where it just doesn't make sense at all. My mother gave me $10. I don't, I cannot understand it. She denies it. She doesn't remember it. I remember I went there, but the alligator was gone. They had, they had gone on. They moved on. God, the thing you're asking for may be something that is, that is dangerous in the Lord. You know, you're saying, I didn't ask for a scorpion. What, you don't know what's going to happen. You don't know. Only God knows. You know, you ask for something that you think is good. It ends up being a scorpion in the end. Ends up being a serpent. God knows. The enemy is the opposite of God. He's the, if God's the father, he's the anti-father. Messiah says, you know, he even calls him a father. He's the father of lies. So he's the opposite. So his, his purpose is to bring to you that which is bad for you, that which is dangerous for you, that which is going to harm you. That, you know, it's some, it, and, and he's never going to say it's going to harm you. He's going he's gonna to dress it up like this is something good. An egg, but it'll end up stinging. It'll be, it'll be a scorpion egg. Ends up stinging you. 
you know, a fish, but ends up being a serpent biting you. When I was a kid and, and our family took a road, decided to do a road trip across America, we, were, we got to San Francisco and we're in a very nice restaurant. We ordered, I ordered, I remember, spaghetti and meatballs. And I'm eating and having a great time and eating. And also, at one point, I said, let me look. I, I mean, I just looked down on my spoon and my spoon, there was a giant cockroach. <laughs> yes, that's what I said. So they, so... It looked really good up to that point, and something could really look good, but if you don't look what's in it, what is in that thing that might look good, feel good, seem good, the very thing you may want, but it actually may be deadly to you in the end. Then, then there are the other things which are not as blatant temptation, but things that look like God's will, and you might even get false signs. You see, the enemy can use any opening that you have. There's something you have not given over to God, and he can give you a sign that's not a sign from God. You don't have the, it's not the peace, doesn't have those things, and it's not, maybe it's not according to his word. But you, you thought, you know, there are a lot of people who get into relationships, and they said, and you know, the other, the other danger is people see what they want to see. You know, people, if you're already for something, you'll only see that, and you won't hear anything that goes against it. You got to beware of deceiving yourself. That's human nature. So the enemy can use that, and will give, mislead you. The enemy seeks to give you something that's going to bite you in the end. That temptation. Every temptation looks good at the beginning and on the outside. But it turns out to be deadly. It destroys you. It robs you. It could be anything. It could be as simple as a sin. It could be a doctrine that tastes good at first, but it's actually not quite of God, and it starts bringing you off. God can you Now, God uses signs, you know, and you can pray, Lord, show me if you're really seeking God's will like Gideon did. But you can do that, and he can do that, but you have to be careful because if you're asking something that's out of God's will and your heart's not right, then the enemy can get in. That relation, there are relationships that can be one of the greatest scorpions in disguise. People are joined to the relationship, and they can't get out of it because, but because they've gotten, like, addicted to it. God wants to give to you what you want. He wants to be able to give you what you want, but he needs, you to, he needs to give you what you need. It says this. God, we know, Romans 8, 28, that God causes, works all things in your life for good, for your good, for those of you who love the Lord. So everything in your life as a child of God, if you let God work it, Every single thing is for your blessing. Everything. May not feel like it. It doesn't say God causes all things to feel good. It says God causes all things to work for good. It doesn't even say that God causes all things to be good. It says to work for good and then they become good. Turns it around. So God can even take something that the enemy, a scorpion, a serpent, the enemy set against you and he can actually turn it around to bless you. Amen. Turn it into a fish. Turn it into an egg. Fish bringing you life. An egg. New life. New things. From, often from problems you, you have new things in your life. Again, many things. The enemy sought to hurt you. God used it in your life to cause you to be born again. Hi, I'm Jonathan Kahn and I hope you were blessed with the video. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and tap the bell icon so you're notified every time a new video is posted. Feel free to share your reactions with your comments and how you were blessed and share this video with your friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.